from IIT Bombay and I work with Professor Varun Bhajara. So basically what I work, work on is uh, gamma ray bursts. So I am going to talk about uh, two of the important aspects of GRDs. Uh, so this is me and I have worked with all these people. So from year to year all these are the giants and we are standing on the shoulders of these giants and we are continuing our good work. So I will tell you about what all we have done. Uh, so GR, there are four main aspects of GRB science. The first one is localization, where the GRB is coming from. So uh, GRBs, uh, there are explosions happening in space. They can happen anytime, anywhere. We don't, they are not a specific source. And uh, so to know the localization where it came from is very important. Similarly, there is timing study or the light curve, which gives us information about at what time how many counts we receive. <laughs> uh, then there is another part which is spectroscopy, which gives us information about the energy and the number of counts. And the fourth important part, which is one of the most challenging parts, is GRB polarization. Why it is very uh, challenging is because polarization itself is a very photon hungry field. And for GRBs, GRBs are very short duration events. They last for few seconds to few minutes. So it becomes very difficult to collect photons in that particular amount of time. And unlike uh, doing light curve or spectroscopy studies, we cannot do a direct measurement of polarization. So we'll come to that. Okay, so uh, I am going to mainly talk about GRB polarization, but uh, I am not going to go into the details of GRB, which Harsh uh, thankfully has already talked about in his previous presentation. Uh, so uh, basically, AstroSat was not designed to detect GRBs in the first place, but in the past six years of its operation, we have detected more than 500 GRBs. So it has been very successful. <coughs> and one of the most important thing is, AstroSat has been very successful in detecting polarization. So till date, it has detected nine, about 19 GRB polarization, more than the dedicated instrument that is Polar. And these are all the GRB instruments since the very beginning. Uh, in these particular energy ranges, look at the numbers. So, if we want to constrain the different models, so a lot of spectroscopic study like curve study has been done, but the only thing which can resolve between all the different models of uh, the GRBs is polarization. And for that, we need significant number of GRBs to be detected. That's why we need instruments such as like Daksha, which will detect large number of GRBs and can do large number of polarization studies. So uh, there has been a lot of theory already in present, uh, which is present. So which gives us uh, where we are looking in the jet. So this theta j is the jet opening angle. Uh, the green color is the region of our viewing angle, and. Uh, Gamma inverse is the Lorentz factor. So from this table, basically, we can distinguish between the different models, uh, whether it is synchrotron ordered, synchrotron random, uh, the Compton drag model or photospheric model. But for that, this is all about theory. But in actual practice, we should be able to detect and observe GRB, which is the most challenging part. So what we do is, um, so AstroSat has these CZT detectors, which are the pixelated detectors. So what happens is when a uh, polarized photon uh, is incident on this detector, so uh, it gets scattered in the perpendicular direction. So now based on this, there will be different, uh, each pixel will have different number of counts. So based on that, what we get is a modulation curve. So at different uh, pixels, we will have different number of photons. So uh, by the way, if you want to see this detector in real, 
you can visit our Daksha booth and you can see this uh, real detector which is actually in space on AstroSat. So uh, why I am talking about all of this? So there were two very bright GRBs which we were interested. So this is GRB 20.5.03a and GRB 20.10.09a. So why these were interesting? Because they had a large number of Compton events associated with them which makes them eligible for polarization study. But nature doesn't want to reveal its secret so easily. It wants the uh, astronomers to break their heads, right? So, uh, we didn't have the localization information for these. Nobody detected it, only AstroSat and Agile. These two instruments detected it, which do, both of them do not have spectroscopy capability and localization capability. So, we said, okay, uh, we'll, we approached the IPN team. That is the interplanetary network team, which basically uses different satellites at different far away locations in space. Now, depending upon the time of arrival of the burst on these satellites, they localize the GRB. So, uh, this first GRB, using the conus wind and Mars ODC data, and uh, conus wind and lab data, and conus wind plus BAT, they localize it to this region. So the black region is the intersection of all of these instruments. Okay, so the GRB is probably located in this along this black line. Similarly, for this particular GRB, uh, the GRB is located in this annular region. Now, this is a big region, right? This is such a crude localization. So what we do? So basically, it brings back to my first work that is GRB localization. So uh, for that we use the AstroSat mass model which is basically a numerical simulation of the whole satellite and why it is called the mass model because it depends upon the mass of the satellite each component. So basically we uh, calculate the uh, number of photons interaction with different satellite elements and this all of this is done in Gian 4. Uh, so how do we localize the GRB? I'll tell you in brief. So this is uh, basically the surface of the detector and uh, this is a detector plane histogram which is a 2D image of the detector and at each point you can see the number of photons which are there. So we compare uh, the source TPH with the simulated ones uh, which we get from the mass model and uh, as you can see as we move in a particular direction as the source location changes uh, the shadow changes and that's how we determine where actually the GRB came from. So uh, we have created a grid of, grid of points and at each point we do uh, the calculations and from there we calculate chi-square and uh, where we get minimum chi-square is the best fit location of the GRB. So uh, for this particular GRB, uh, we did our analysis and this is the plot that we got and we got our position at RA deck, uh, this which is approximately lying on this line over here. Okay. Uh, so finally, uh, to do the polarization study, we are basically uh, studying how with localization uh, change, the polarization results will change. So at all of these positions, we computed uh, polarization, So, uh, but our results are, uh, didn't show that there is any polarization in this at different locations, nor did we see any change in the polarization angle or we saw any significant polarization. So uh, the conclusion is either the GRB itself is unpolarized or we need to investigate further because this GRB has quite a number of counts and there can be regions in the GRB which might have opposite polarizations which might cancel out the polarization uh, totally. So, we need to investigate this into more details. But this is a very new work 
nobody till now uh, has done this so uh, we need to investigate this uh, very thoroughly because we need to know how robust our polarization measurements are okay that's it thank you everyone thank you for listening thank you for want to know anything more you can contact me